Hi guys, good morning, it's Mark Dawes. It's a beautiful, blustery day. And I wanted to start this week off with a video for you and I wanted to ask the question, what has luck got to do with anything? In other words, are some people just predisposed to be lucky and are some people predisposed to be unlucky or do we engineer those circumstances? In other words, do successful people engineer their own luck and do unsuccessful people engineer their own luck? Now, I know straight away some of you even thinking about that question right now will think, well, that's mad because, you know, no matter what I do, I'm just unlucky. Well, I actually watched a film yesterday which prompted me to do this video, and that was called The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith. And I saw a guy on that movie, and I've seen it before, and it's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, I'd watch it from start to end. But I saw a guy there put up with all sorts of adversity to actually achieve the goal he wanted to achieve, which was driven not by money, but by the need to provide for his family. And this is a really interesting point. Now, for those of you who've read Stephen Covey's work, you'll know that one of the key principles Covey talks about is starting with the end in mind. You know, start with your outcome set. Know what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And that's a really important point for those of you that want to be successful, is you need to know what you want to be successful in, but more importantly, why you want to be successful. You must have a reason. And it's never just about the money with successful people. It's never about the money. It's about what achieving that aim will give them. So if you need to earn money, it's what that money is going to allow you to do. In the case of Will Smith, who was the actor in the film The Pursuit of Happiness, it was allowed to provide for his family. Now, we live in an age where it's really easy, and I don't mean that as an arrogant boast, but it actually is really easy, or at least easier than before, to engineer luck. Think about it. We have this thing called the internet. Now, as I'm talking to you on camera right now, there are probably hundreds or maybe even thousands of people who've got the opportunity to watch this video and see me present. We've never had this opportunity before. When I first started in business 25 years ago, we didn't have the internet, or at least it was in its real infancy. And I had to go out and meet people on a face-to-face -face basis, or write letters and post letters and do direct marketing. And there were only so many people you could reach in a day. Now, we get 1,200 to 2,000 hits a day on our website. Yes, it's taken time to build that up, and we've learned through trial and error. But never before, for those of you who are thinking about going to business, has there been the opportunity to reach so many people, to offer your services and your products uh, and, and whatever it is you want to actually give to society, to earn a living, to build a business, and to become successful. So there's a massive amount of opportunity out there for luck. The other thing is, as well, to, to really consider is, is luck a set of circumstances or is it a state of mind? Now Professor Richard Wiseman, who did a huge study on luck, actually proves that it's a state of mind. He proved that lucky people are lucky because they believe they're lucky and unlucky people are unlucky because they believe they're unlucky. Now, as I've said already, you know, most people see someone and they take a snapshot in time and they think, well that person's lucky. But they don't see what went before. They don't see the hard work and all the unlucky stuff that went prior to that. They just see a snapshot in time of that person as they are now. And most people who are successful, or lucky if you wish, have actually had to overcome a huge amount of adversity, major, major setbacks. They've had lots of situations that have never turned out the way they wanted. I'm an example of that. I lost a lot of money in business. I was £80,000 in the red and he lost my house. Um, I had setback after setback after setback. My good friend John Stebbin and I, when we did one of our first courses ever that we promoted with money we didn't have, we actually put it on in London, we hired a sports hall, we advertised it, we were banking on people coming, and the night before, it thundered and it rained and there was hurricanes and there was lightning, and when we got to the gym in the morning, the roof had collapsed, the floor was flooded, and we spent the first couple of hours mopping up the floor, and in the end, we turned people away. Now, we could have looked at that circumstance and gone, shit, that's just a sign from God or whatever or fate or karma or whatever you want to call it and we're not meant to do this business and given up. But we didn't. We kept on going. And John is a great mentor. He's been a fantastic mentor for me. And he said what we do is little steps, slowly, slowly catchy monkey. Everything we do will lead us towards the outcome we want if we learn from what we're doing. So we don't treat it as a failure. We don't treat it as a setback. We say what can we learn from this that we can apply to move us towards our goal. And our goal was to be successful in this particular field. And it didn't happen overnight. It took a long time to do, and it was lots and lots of steps, lots and lots of setbacks, but with a clear defined purpose of what we wanted to achieve. So we had that goal set in mind right from the very beginning. It's also important for those of you that are looking to succeed, 
where you take your counsel and your advice from. Now, the other day, someone came to see me, and I'd seen them months and months previously, and they had a great idea for a business, and they'd pop around to see me again. We were sat there having a cup of coffee. And I said, how's the business going? You know, how, how are you getting on with putting your business in place, or have you started your business, or how are you getting on with it? And he said, no, 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 I decided not to do it. I said, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, why? why? And he said, well, I was talking to my uncle, and he, didn't, he thinks it's a bad idea. He thinks I'll probably fail, or lose money, or it won't succeed. I said, oh, okay, that's cool. And what, what did your uncle do? He said he drives a taxi. I said, okay, uh, uh, great. Uh, does he own the taxi company? He said, no. Has he ever owned a business? I said, no. I said, okay, so let me just get this clear in my head. Your uncle who's never owned a business, is never likely to own a business, and has never had any dealings with running a business, has advised you that your business that you want to start is going to fail, and he's not even related to that business in any way, shape, or form because your business is completely separate from and different from taxis. He said, yes. I said, that's crazy. I said, that's like going into a, into a butcher shop and asking for financial advice on a mortgage. You, you, you're going to the wrong person for advice. So it's really important that if you want to succeed, lucky if you like, be lucky, that you get advice and counsel from people who've actually achieved the very thing you want to achieve. In NLP, they call this modeling. You go and find successful people in your chosen field, you find out what they did, how they did it, and why they did it, and you model that. So you get the same values, and the same drive, and the same inertia, and you learn from their mistakes so you can succeed quicker. You would never go to someone who's never run a business for advice on how to run a business. It's absolutely barking mad. But people do this, and one of the reasons they do this is it self-supports their opinion of themselves that they won't succeed. So they look for information to support the fact that they probably wouldn't succeed in the first place because they're not lucky. This making sense to you? Now, we... I've got the opportunity to be successful like never before in, 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 the, in the industry. We can produce videos very cheaply, you can produce PDFs, you can do audio MP3 programs, you've got mobile phones that will take video, they'll, they'll record stuff, you've got the internet that will allow you to access billions of people worldwide and sell your services and products, and you probably have a lot of valuable information that you, you can give to people who, who will be willing to pay money for that advice because everyone has something to offer but most people just don't realize it. Think about it. How many times have you given advice away for free without charging someone for it? Well, if one person needs that advice, there's probably 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or a million other people would gladly pay for that advice to help them actually achieve what they want to do. So my message for you this morning to start the week off is believe in your success. Believe in your ability to succeed. Don't let someone steal your dreams. You have the opportunity to do what you want to do but believe in yourself, set your outcome, know what you want, figure out how to do it, but most importantly, understand why you want to do it. Understand that reason. And then the second most important thing for you is get advice or get guidance or learn from people who've actually done it. Don't take advice and guidance and don't learn from people who haven't done it because that's just business and commercial suicide. So know what you want, go for it, but get advice from people that will actually help you achieve it. Have a great start to 2015, and I'll see you very shortly.